<laughs> Hi, good afternoon. How are I, how are everybody? Oh look, you can see Dave there in the background. Look. It's my cameraman. <laughs> so today we are um sitting in my house. Uh we decided to do it here rather than the shop. Um, so today we will be doing Scissor Keeper. Now I'm just hanging around waiting to see if anybody else is going to come and join us. Um, we, um, what, we are, what else have we been doing? We've been packing stuff up in the shop. Um, getting ready for Saturday. Getting ready for Saturday? What are we doing Saturday? We well, were counting bolts, weren't you? Oh yeah, Saturday we've got a, an auction. So we've got some uh, fabric that Sarah was telling me about yesterday. We've got fabric there that's um, less than four pound a metre. I mean, you can't can't get better than that, really, can you? I always um, buy more storage. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I buy a lot of storage just to get everything in. Um, hi, Linda. We um, uh, Yes, yeah, Saturday. So you'll be able to join us at one o'clock on Saturday and we will have um, a sale going on. Um, Sarah will uh, tell tell you all, all about it um, as we're going. She'll uh, let you know how to, how to play the game, really. So um, we've also been getting ready for... We're going on her chanter again. So um, the 30th of... Um, where are we? April. Um, so we will we'll be going on her chanter again. So we've been sorting out a few things for that. So we're everywhere. We just get everywhere. So hi everybody. Um, we are doing scissor keeper today. It's a really easy pattern. Um, it's quite fun. I'm going to have five, but about five at the end of this. So this was my first one. I've chosen to do it. Let's get the light right. I've chosen to do it in, in the really simple, simple um, way of doing it. Now, if you like me, oh, you like your scissors. Okay, so in this one, can you come and have me camera? So this one here, so you've got the three pockets. So you could put your scissors in. Look at those, aren't they lush? love them you can put your rotary cutter in so we've been I'm gonna be able to put my scissors to bed in all of them look at that and you can put all your bits in there as well you can tell I'm a crafter I don't throw anything out okay so these are two what are you doing you're checking my cleavage today are you so there we go all right so this is what we're making and it's really quite simple. You're going to start with an A4 piece of paper. Now, I had a look at quite a few on the internet and they all wanted a piece of paper that was a bit bigger than an A4. So we've gone down to this. Okay, you're with me so far? So it's just a question of folding. So you're going to take your, uh, what's the colour like on there? Would it be better with a white one? It's okay. It's okay? It's okay. Right, so you're going to take your bottom right hand corner and take it up and fold it almost as if you're doing a um, paper half, aeroplane. Half square, yeah. Paper aeroplane. Half square triangle onto a rectangle, if that makes sense. Not now, babe. I'll play with you after. So. She was talking to him, by the way. <laughs> So you've gone and you've folded it over and made the crease. Then you take your the, the right hand crease, you fold it to meet your edge. So just like Dave said, making an aeroplane. Okay. And you're going to unfold it all. And with your handy ruler, and this one is made by Andy of Crafty UK. It's a two and a half inch ruler by 17 and a half. And it's dead handy. I've been using it for everything because I, f I like the length. Um, 
I've got the length but not the girth, you see. Right. You find that the six and a half inch by 24 can get a bit unwieldy. So you're going to score, uh, draw down the lines that you've just made, the creases that you've just made. Okay? Right, that's. And we're going to call it one, two, three, four. So now I have to remember how to do it. You're just going to fold number one in to meet number two. Then you fold number three. So you've you've gone right sides together there, near enough. And then you're going to fold three over so that you have four is sticking out and then you're going to fold it back so that four comes over on the top and it really is as easy as that then you're going to fold your tip your tip of your point now i've seen some where they've left it and then they've decorated they've hung beads and things so i think one of the next ones that i do i might try that but for this one today we're going to fold that tip up there like that. There's my paper scissors. And then you're just going to chop it off. Okay. So you then end up with your pattern looking like that. Okay. So there's one I made earlier. Now you saw the size of the pattern. You're only going to need just over an A4 size of paper, of, of material. So you can, the, you'll have lots of scraps there that you, you will have just have put to one side. So, Sean asks, how far are you folding? How far what? On here, which bit? Well, we'll come back to that. Okay, which bit? Um, so you, you spread it, spread your pattern out and put it on your material. Now you want to put your material right sides together. Okay. And you're going to cut it out. I'm going to have to stand up for this, I think. You're going to cut it out a quarter of an inch. So you want to, you want to make your seam allowance. You could leave your seam allowance within what you've just done. How far do you cut off the tip? You cut it at the crease. So you've, Folded your, yes, folded when it you, up. When you folded it up, how far up did you the fold it The tip met the uh, edge of four. Okay. You brought your tip up to up to there. Oh, yeah. So okay. there we are. So yeah. Can you see? You bring your tip right up to, to, to meet your, the edge of four. Oh, yeah. And then chop it off. Chop it off. Carrie's going to go for it. She's going to make one. And I just love them. Like I said, I'm going to have five. So, so we can give one away. Um, right. So I'm cutting off my quarter of, a, quarter of an inch seam allowance all the way around. And then I roughly guess quarter of an inch. The first one I did measure. I have to be honest. But... Uh, these life's too short it's not going to make that much difference you can always decorate it right so I don't want those you're then going to take your bit of fluff your wadding okay now i as you can see i've seen this together this is a bit of a frankenstein one is this project is ideal for getting rid of all your all your bits really so then you're going to put You put it on the bottom, okay? You're going to turn it round the right way. So if you were to um, put it in the middle, you wouldn't be able to turn it round th the right way with it being on the inside. So you've got your fabrics right sides together. Not that there's a right side to the red, but right sides together. And you're going to pin it on top of your fleth. Why do you call it fluff? Because I can never decide whether it's wadding or batting. 
I think batting is the American one, so you're wadding. You put it on your bit of wadding. Okay. So, now you're going to sew all the way round. So, rather than you sit and watch me sew it, you're going to sew all the way round, leaving a gap for turning. Carrie suggests a cutlery holder for a picnic. Ooh, yes. Yes, that would be a good one as well. So, I've sewn, so I've sewn all the way round the outside, leaving a three and a half, three, three and a half inch gap there. Okay, now you're going to find your right scissors because they're all put away. You're going to snip into here, try not to snip your stitches. I'm going to snip. It's such a quick project that we probably could have done it all together. Um, but you know how flutter, fluttered I get. So we can then cut off the corners. Why? Um, it saves on the bulk. It eases the bulk in your corners and you'll get a sharper corner. So I'm just trimming off the edges but not trimming into the... Um, into the stitches just to take Vicky it down. Vicky Cooper suggests Christmas cutlery holders. Yeah, I like that. I can see a whole whole range of stuff coming on. We'll be on hand, Ho Chanda doing it before you know it. So then you're going to find your hole and you want to part your two fabrics. You're going to leave the, um, the wadding on the edge on the on the inside on the back of the uh, inside fabric now it doesn't matter which fabric as you can see from the two that I've made they actually hi Linda they're actually opposite they go the opposite way so and it was because um, I'd put one fabric on top, which made it become the other way round. I chose, decided on, on which fabric I wanted on the outside. So, prod out your corners. I have a, a nice prodder. This is a pipe prodder. And it works really well because it's tapered. Okay, so once you've pushed it all out, see, it's quite nice, isn't it? Um, you're going to roll the edges. Carrie's sister's watching. Is she? Yes. Hi, Carrie's sister. Who else is there? Are there any questions? Uh, Andy Griffiths. Hey, Andy. Lisa Must Fowler. We... Linda Pinch. Lisa Fowler won the prize yesterday. Did she? She did. She's a lucky girl. Isn't she? <laughs> Linda Pinch. Linda Pinch was looking so well. I think all this rest is doing her wonders. Little nap in the afternoon is lovely. Oh, yeah. Siesta in the sun. Wouldn't catch Dave doing that. No, not that often. No. You just don't catch him. Yeah. Oh, well, and Jane Case is here. Hey, Jane. Sorry, my mistake. You must be on lunch break. Your lunch break to stay with us. Fiona Thomas, Nikki England. Hi, it's quite a nice few of you today. Right, so you go all the way round and then you would iron it. Okay. Hello, iron from, it. hello from Carrie's sister. Hi, Carrie's sister. <laughs> so there's your seam allowance. So you would iron that in as well. Okay. And I, I'm just finger pressing it, pressing it. The iron is on. But uh, so. You now have your ready to uh, quilt piece of fabric. So you would just quilt how you want, but you need to make sure that that bit there is sealed. So I top stitched. I made sure there was a top stitch that went all the way round. I didn't on this one. I put my uh, quilting 
as part of it um, but I think it quite, looks quite nice when it's top stitched so again what is uh, what is it that we're actually making is it a scissor holder uh, yes a scissor right, holder right. scissor keeper okay so this is one that I have um, quilted Carrie's sister lives in Bridgewater that's up north in, oh no that's yeah, over, over the there. bridge yes it's the carnival city okay so you've now got um, your quilted bit of fabric okay so we're going to fold it back again just like we did with your piece of paper you want to fold it so you're going to fold it one over two then you're going to take three from the right to the left and then back with your four there is a uh, destructions which will go up on the on the website all photos taken by myself hi Ali hi Ali right so now to sew it so you have you stitched you fold... the fold lines no not yet um so when you've you've folded it like this you're going to iron it and you want to iron it so that you can see your creases so you're going to iron it front and back then we're going to take it to the machine so you're going to have to put up with the machine for the minute okay so you folded your first fold is taking segment one over segment two so you would do that okay and then you're going to sew down that line to keep it in place now I'm going to take my stitch up I'm going to take it up to three and a half because it's now going through quite a lot of bulk there now if you have a walking foot I'm, I'm doing it without a walking foot because some people won't have one and I just wanted to show that it would it would work but if you have a walking foot, I would suggest a walking foot would be a good idea. So you've made your first pocket there. Any question? No, Linda wants to know what's the dog's name. Uh, one's Copper and the other one is Rufio. Rufio! So now you've put your one over two. You're going to flip it over. So that it's on the back now if you don't want the line to show you need to do that in um, a coordinating color to, to your backing so you're now going to take your four and you're going to flip it over the back of number three and you're going to sew that down there you're going to sew it to that it looks a bit strange at the moment but it will all make sense in a moment okay so you're going to take that down there Jane wants a tour of the machine and storage cupboard oh my machine love my machine she hasn't tidied it though Jane <laughs> I just threw it all in there okay so now you have another your front pocket is all done at the but it's sitting at the back so you're going to want to bring that round to the front and then you're going to sew down here now you're going through a lot of fabric here now so you just have to take it easy and you also want to do sew across the bottom because you don't want your scissors falling out so i'm going to when you feel it you can feel all the the bulk i'm going to sew you could do all this by hand you could whip stitch it um and tidy it up really neatly by hand but i know uh, most of you are allergic to doing things by hand so let me that up again and this is where 
you have a look and it this is why you would do it by hand and it doesn't like it okay I'm gonna have people screaming at me don't do that so, there we go and we're just going to take it up to the end really nice and slow I've, I've got a jeans needle in there I was sewing something that was really heavy so I think there's still a jeans needle in And there we have another scissors keeper. I quite like them. But I think it could be doled up a bit more. So if you wanted to um, jazz it up a bit, you could add some pom-pom trim down it and up there. Or since I've got a fishy, a fishy um, thing, Hi Meg. Hey Maggie. Erin has asked for a piano. Um, I think we ought to buy them a baby grand and see where they're gonna put it. Right. So you could put add add your um your little bits to it. You could hang um beads or something off the bottom. You could jazz it up. Um, if you didn't want it to be um, the squared off, you could just round it. I looked at trying to make it so that it would fold over when your scissors were in there. But it would have been a really weird shape. So I will work on that for you. So we are so simple to do a scissor keeper. Um I can't wait to see all yours. Does your machine cut the thread? Yes, my machine. I will take you through my cupboard. Again. Again. <laughs> so, I have an Innovus uh, 1100 uh, brother. I would definitely, definitely suggest one of these. They're brilliant. Um, it does everything that I want it to. Um, I know that a couple of people have had... Um, issues but i've not had any problems with mine at all if i do something wrong it tells me um it's not quite as clever as my v3 uh but it's more usable my cabinet What's your v3? my v3 is my embroidery machine the one that we're is, not gonna have a look, we're not gonna have a look down there because i've just thrown all the rubbish down there <laughs> so in my cupboard it's just um i've got things in there that would be all the things that might be handy that I've never used they're all still in packaging this is Teddy's this is uh, Sarah's um, footstool there's all the bits left over from that so I should really make her a cushion or something shouldn't I hi Val um, these are all my bag bits I've got I've got a whole thing of bag bits just love collecting you know you lot collect fabric I collect bits so there's all bag bits in there um cottons it's just if you could get one of these cabinets and storage underneath oh there's storage underneath as well look there's all fabric and things in there and I would like to be able to say that this is the only place that I keep fabric but it really isn't. It isn't. Yes, you could use hair elastics and buttons for the foldy over bits. Um, instead of sewing, you could um, certainly do that. Um, I, um, I don't know. Sorry, I was, I was thinking. Um, where did I get it? Um, I was doing a show in Bristol uh, two years ago. And Sarah came down a couple of days and Dave was there 
And when Dave came down on the Sunday, I said, oh, Dave, can I have that, please? And he came home in the car with us. It was just as easy as that. <laughs> so let's think about what we got. What have we got on tomorrow? Is Sarah there? Yeah, Sarah's there. What, what are you doing tomorrow, Sarah? Um, on Saturday, we will be doing the auction of fabric. So all the fabrics you will be... Um, <laughs> bag lady, cheeky thing. Um, we'll be doing an auction. Um, so you'll be able to have a look at the fabrics and say um, what... Uh, <laughs> Jane says, oh, Dave, can I have one, please? He's, he's, he's nodding. I'm sure that... Um, <laughs> I'm sure that <laughs> Phil will buy you one. Um, <laughs> they're all going on me, Dave, and me. Um, so head back on, Sarah. So we, um, yes, the auction, and tomorrow Sarah will be doing foundation piecing tomorrow. So uh, hopefully, if I'm not out delivering, uh, I might try a little bit first. <laughs> Sarah says she's first. So all the time. Yeah, always, always. He always puts his girlfriend first. So, um, that's me finished. I'm not uh, very good at waffling on. Um, is there any questions? I mean, it's a really nice, easy project. I mean, there's very little uh, cutting out for me. Um, I've got to think about what I'm going to do next week. Um, uh, yeah, I'm going to have a look at doing um, a mini iron caddy at some point but i need um to source the silver stuff you know the stuff that you you get on ironing boards and that i need to source some of that um a pin dog what's a pin dog you've done a pin mouse i did a pin mouse i could put longer ears on it um, so anyway, as soon as I work out what I'm doing next week, I will let you know. Um, I'm going now because uh, I've got the most awful toothache and uh, it's starting up again. And you don't, oh, we could do Dave the Dash Hand. You don't want to watch me um, die uh, here. Um, we could look at um, doing Dave the Dog. And I will see you Saturday with Sarah, okay? You take care, lovelies. Um, see you soon. Bye. Bye. How do I turn this off now?